Hello, I'm Nikki Terrio and we are out of the gallery today and we are taking a little trip in David McKay's backyard and here we are with him. <laughs> Nikki, I, I wanted to show you this scene because I'm actually painting it in my studio right at this uh, ah, yes. 10-15 minutes ago. I don't have it finished yet but you can see that it's uh, quite a foggy rainy day today. And it's interesting because when I started the painting, it, I, I came out here one morning and there was a lot of fog out there. And I thought what a nice uh, change of scenery that would be because I painted that view several times, even in the winter and the summer. But I don't think I've ever painted it with all this fog. So um, when we get back in my studio, I can show you the painting, which is about three quarters finished. And, uh, and I think it's even foggier now than it is in the painting. <laughs> But I've, but I've painted in this area quite a few times. I've painted the old canoe that I've done many times, and I've painted it down by this tree. And I've painted the hammock and the view across the river. So, and I've even painted my grapevine. So, so this area actually is quite rich with uh, inspiration from the artwork. And uh, although I don't try to capture it exactly as it is, but it is an inspiration. Good. All right. So we'll see. We'll go next to your studio. I'm here with artist David McKay and now we are back in his studio up at Gallery 78 and we are now going to look at a painting which we had just previously seen actually in a location at his house in his backyard and this painting um, is, is going to be in his upcoming exhibition which will be on November 1st at the gallery and it's called Near the River. So let's take a look at the painting. Well, it's a little bit drier up here, Nikki. <laughs> yes. And as you can see, the painting is a little bit brighter than the actual scene that we just saw today. Mm -hmm. uh, and I saw this view, as I explained it when we were over there on the actual site, that this is a morning view. And in the morning in October, the uh, fog, I think the river, the water is warmer than, it, than the air, so you get all this fog coming off it. And I'm titling this painting October Morning Fog from Home because mm -hmm. of that reason. But I, uh, I wanted it to lift up, and I want the viewers to look out here. And I have all this uh, foliage down in the foreground, but my problem right now is because this is in the foreground, and I want it to, to uh, look that way, and I want this to look far away, uh, the problem is getting this in here without putting a lot, I don't want a lot of detail because I don't want people really mm -hmm. looking down here so much. So it's just something that's dark and contrast with the uh, form yeah. and distance. Mm -hmm. Now, um, for your upcoming exhibition, right, near the river, why, what is with this aspect of the river? Why did you choose that? Well, for some reason, I've ended up living beside a river all my life. Mm -hmm. uh, I lived beside the Nashwalk River growing up. This is the St. John River, and it's only uh, about a mile or a kilometer from where I used to live. My parents both lived beside rivers, so uh, for some reason I gravitated to the river, to the water, mm -hmm. and a lot of the uh, things that I've painted are either in the St. John River Valley or not very far from it. Mm -hmm. uh, this one, of course, shows the river. Yeah. And uh, this one over here with the canoe, now that's a, sort of an interesting one because I had I had that old canoe, I sold it last summer, but I've had, had it for a number of years and I did a lot of paintings of it. And, but uh, in this particular painting, I've taken it away from the river and put it in an almost imaginary setting. Mm -hmm. uh, the rocks and the field and those trees are things that I could find almost anywhere in New Brunswick. Yeah. But, um, but I, like to, I don't like to work from photographs and I don't really like to work on location too much. Mm -hmm. So a lot of my things are, are familiar looking things, but I juggle them around a little bit adjust them and if I think it'll make a better painting uh, from an artistic point of view then I'd like to do that. Mm -hmm. okay. So that could be near the river too with the canoe and, uh, and uh, things, things always seem to relate to the river for some yeah. reason. Yeah. Well and then there is also I've heard that in, in a few of your paintings you've incorporated people, not obviously people but like Tell us a little bit about well, how you do that. Well, it was brought to my attention, and I never even thought too much about it, but a lot of my paintings, 
are about people without, without actually showing them. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's almost as though the people were there and then they kind of wandered off somewhere and I painted what was left. <laughs> um, well, this one here, for instance, with the river and the bridge, that's a good example. The one with the canoe is another example. That's actually my uh, older brother Brian's canoe. And uh, he worked at the canoe factory one time. So there's a whole story about him and me trading a painting of the canoe for the canoe and all that sort of thing. I mean, when I was painting the, the picture, I was thinking of all these things, but no actual bodies showed up in the, in the mm -hmm. painting. And the one down here with the hockey sticks is, is kind of another example. When, uh, when we were kids, we lived right beside the Nashwalk River. We just had to cross the street and go down over the bank. And we played hockey down there on, in the wintertime, and we always just left our sticks sticking in a snowbank because nobody went down when we weren't there and uh, just saved us carrying the back four. So we just left the equipment down there. And I got thinking about that and, you know, a few years ago, and I kept thinking of those hockey sticks and the stuck-in trees and the limbs of the trees and the shape of the hockey sticks. And anyway, I, was, I guess I was attracted by the composition of that, mm -hmm. that idea. And then when I got started doing the painting, my mind wandered back to being a kid and playing hockey. And I had a friend back then who uh, actually played in the NHL, and his name was Danny, Danny Grant. And he had four brothers, and they were all fine athletes, and they all played hockey. So when I finished this, I got looking at it, and I think, I think I'll just call it brothers. And it was kind of a tribute mm -hmm. to that, to the Grant family, and also to our childhood. Aww. And in fact, one of the sticks I carved, or I painted uh, Danny's initials in it, as though he had carved it in a stick. Aww. It was very subtle, you'd, know, yeah. you'd probably never find it unless I showed it to you. Mm -hmm. So in a way, that relates to the river, too. Mm -hmm. And now, what about this one? Uh, this one here, uh, that came about from, when I was young I visited my grandmother an awful lot. Like I spent my summer vacation there and, and winter vacations too. And, uh, and she lived in Prince William, which was along the St. John River, but of course further up river from Fredericton. Uh, but she loved orchards and she loved apple trees and she liked that rough, texture of the bar, mm -hmm. and for some reason I do too. Maybe it's because when, we, when I was little we used to talk about it. And she often said that apple trees in the winter time, when the snow was really deep, they looked like spiders walking across the field. <laughs> and when you think of it, they really do, because oh, the limbs right. hang down, stick in the snow. Yeah. So, uh, so uh, I call that Nana's Orchard, because uh, mm -hmm. Nana's the name that we called our grandmother. I think, mm -hmm. I think the first grandchild was trying to say Nana or, or something, yeah. come up Nana anyway. <laughs> But uh, but anyway, again, that's that doesn't show the river, but in my mind, it's very close to it. Mm -hmm. And then let's see, how about this one right here? Okay, well, these three little paintings are studies for a, a larger egg tempera painting that I I think is finished. I have it hanging home right now, but I may, if I have an extra few days before my exhibit opens. I may work on it just a little bit more, but it shows, and this is getting away from the river theme, but this, uh, this originated on the Irving Nature Trail in St. John, mm -hmm. and uh, la uh, summer before last, I had my granddaughter Olivia and her little friend Eleanor, and Sharon and I and the two girls were walking along the trail, the Irving Nature Trail, which mm -hmm. isn't on the shore, but it's up in the woods. But the two little girls wanted to go down and play in the rocks, so they went down and I had to go down and kind of bring them back up two or three times because <laughs> yeah. I was afraid they'd hurt themselves. Mm -hmm. And uh, anyway, but probably the last time I was down there, I got looking around and I thought this would be interesting uh, material for painting. Mm -hmm. And But I didn't have a camera with me, I didn't have any oh. sketching equipment or anything like that. So anyway, I just come back home and probably a month or two months afterwards, I did one of those little uh, watercolors from memory. I forget which one came first. And then I did two or three others, and then a slightly bigger one, and then I finally started an egg temper painting. Oh, wow. and, and kind of like today, I was fascinated with the fog down there, and I called it uh, light coming through the fog. Mm -hmm. the, uh, the egg temper painting shows more of a bigger group of rocks up here, and more beach and driftwood and things like that. Wow, 
Oh, these are beautiful. I really love this one, actually. And so, if you would like to come see these works and meet David as well, you can come to the opening, which is on Friday, November 1st, here at Gallery 78. And we are also going to have another video, which will be made that night, just to show what the exhibit looks like in the gallery downstairs. Thank you for watching.